Welcome to Module 5 of the IBM MQ Certificate Management Tutorial for Commercially Signed Certs. In this module we're going to receive the certs. So far we created a baseline environment, we provisioned some cert requests, and then we had those processed by GoDaddy who provided some receipts. Move those receipts over to uh, our Unix server, and uh, now I'm going to use OpenSSL to actually display the certificate that was returned by GoDaddy. All of these uh, certificates are standard X509, so you can use tools like OpenSSL to uh, display the things that um, GSKit won't. So here we see that this is uh, domain, uh, the distinguished name is uh, birch.mq.iopconsulting.com. Uh, we see the uh, usage constraints and the certificate policies. Note that the uh, repository is where you can get the signer certs, and uh, the specific signer cert is uh, listed there on the authority information. Um, <coughs> the GD bundle is a package of three signer certs. There's the root, there's uh, two intermediate signers, and unfortunately they're all together, uh, which GSKit does not process these. You have to provide a label for each one that you load into GSKit, each one that you load into the key store. You've got to provide a label for. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to copy them out, and then we're just going to paste them into uh, a set of files. So that was the first one. And now we're going to go grab the second one, and put that in the copy buffer. And then save that as cert2 and hit control D at the end. So basically, what we're doing is we're catting the copy buffer into a file. You hit control D, that's end of file, and then it saves that. So now we're copying the third certificate into the copy paste buffer, saving that as cert3. Now, just as before, you can use OpenSSL to uh, display the certificates and this will tell us for each one of those which one's the root, which one's the intermediate and so forth. So let me type in my uh, OpenSSL command. Tell it the file we want in. Whoops, hang on a second. I need to give it the actual file name here. There we go. So give it the file name, we tell it to print that file as text, and no out says don't print the hex version of that. And so here's the distinguished name for cert1. You'll see that the common name is the uh, GoDaddy Secure Certificate Authority G2. That's going to be helpful because here in a second we're going to do a receive command, or I'm sorry, an, an add command. So run mqakm dash cert dash add. We'll put a trusted signer cert into the key store. Specify the key store name. Tell it to use the stashed password. Tell it which file we're going to add. And then we've got to give it the label, the human readable label by which we can know this cert. Now I've already copied the uh, first part of this. It's going to take a couple of copy and pastes here to get this thing into the command line. So I'll copy the last part, paste, add a quote. Ah, got to specify cert1.crt, not txt, um, to make this work correctly. <laughs> Obviously, you've got to tell it the actual file name that you used. Um, I know I said in Module 1 that the demo was going to go perfectly. Um, best laid plans of mice and men. Here we go. So you specify the cert, and it's added that. 
and we're going to go ahead and get the name of the cert2 and change this to say cert2 and we'll go up and get the distinguished name that we just printed out now fortunately this time around it's on one line So there's the common name, copy, paste, and hit enter. It will add that. And we have one more to add here. Now you have to add the signer certificates, otherwise when you receive your signed certificate, the uh, uh, GS Kit will have no way to validate it. The way that it validates your signed certificate is that it looks at who signed it, and it sees whether or not it has that certificate in its trust store. And then it looks at who signed that intermediate certificate, and then it looks for that in its trust store. And it walks the chain from your personal certificate all the way up to the root. If you don't have those intermediate and root certificates in the key store, then it's impossible to validate when you load that certificate the first time. So now that we've um, loaded the certificates, we're going to do a cert list. And now you can see uh, the three certificates that we have just added to the key store. Now there's also a CRT out there, which is the thing that we received from the CA. It's uh, the corresponding uh, file that goes with the certificate signing request that we submitted earlier. And uh, I started to put the label, and then uh, uh, you don't actually need the label. If you remember when we created the CSR, uh, we specified the label. So before I receive this thing, I'm just going to go ahead and list the cert requests. There we go. So you see we actually have a cert request with the label of IBM term Q Birch. And now I can do a receive on that particular file. Cert receive. Specify the database. Tell it to use the stash password. Tell it to use that particular file. And we don't need the label. Now um, there's a uh, error that's thrown here by GS Kit tells us that the basic constraint extension uh, was invalid and that it failed validation. However, uh, this is a standard X509 cert. I'm not sure why it failed validation. It doesn't seem to impact the running of the queue manager. So I did report that and uh, hopefully IBM will have uh, a fix for that at some point that you'll pick up in, I don't know, 8.002 will probably have it if it's uh, something they need to fix. So at this point I'm going to run a cert detail and then we'll be able to see whether or not that certificate uh, matches the uh, value that we saw in the open SSL when we dumped it that way. Here we go. Oh, that should have been details, not detail. There we go. So now we have our cert in our key store, and you can see here that uh, it's uh, got the basic constraints. Uh, CA false means that it can't sign any other certificates. Uh, path length is negative, which shows up under GSKit as a very, very large positive number. And uh, we have our distinguished name, and uh, the DNS name, the subject alternative name, is there. So we're going to go ahead and fire up Explorer. Oh. Uh, this is a very easy mistake to make. Definitely have to do a refresh security type SSL anytime that you change the key store. That causes MQ to dump the uh, memory cache of the key store that it's holding. So that's it. We've received our certificate. 
And the next module, we'll go ahead and configure MQ and show you how to set up SSL in incremental steps. Click on the link, go to module six.